No, I mean, at this point, the problem is what the Iranians want is immediate relief from international sanctions. There's no clear path to actually getting a lot of the sanctions removed, particularly those that started in the U.S. Congress. And so the Iranians are not going to get, I think, what they're demanding from the international community. They also want international recognition of the right to enrich uranium at lower levels. We're not prepared to give that to them at the moment. So I don't see how the Iranians are going to take a suboptimal deal. If we start a dialogue, though, is that enough to take a little bit of the pressure off? Here's the problem. If the dialogue had begun a year ago or two years ago, I think we would have had a path to an off-ramp. The problem is if you look where the Iranians are in terms of their nuclear program, they've made significant strides, particularly enriching at higher grade levels that are close to their weapons grade level. They're also transferring centrifuges into a heavily fortified site that the Israelis can't strike with their bunker-busting bombs. So we're potentially getting to the point where the Iranians are reaching breakout capability. And so the Iranians have made so much progress that if we don't get a deal soon, we're going to be in a whole different situation with the Iranians in terms of where they are in terms of their capabilities. Let me ask you about where they are in terms of their capabilities or where they want to be. We always write that they claim they only want to develop nuclear power. Uh, and, and, and not nuclear weapons. Is there any possibility that there's a shred of truth to that statement? What they've always said consistently, and it's a program that began under the Shah, is it is for strictly for civilian purposes, for power generation. And so that is what they tell their population. What has made people suspicious is the fact that they're enriching now at higher grade levels, which are closer to weapons grade level. It's not the 3.5 to 5 percent that you would need for power generation. So people are suspicious of why they're enriching at these higher grade levels. Also, there's a suspicion around what they've been doing at some sites, like the Parchin site. It's a military site, so the Iranians won't give access to inspectors to see it, but that's where says they're suspected of doing weapons-related work. So there's a lot of suspicion around the Iranian statement. We always write as well that uh, the United States doesn't rule out military activity, especially at these sites. How likely is that, though? I don't think the Obama administration has any desire for a military strike on Iran. I mean, they were basically saying, we'll do it if they get weapons. They are still a significant amount of time away from having weapons. But the Israeli government has said, we do not want them to reach breakout capability. And that's a very important distinction, because if you take breakout capability as your red line, they could potentially breach that by spring of summer of this year. And so I think what we really have to watch are the statements coming out of the Israeli government and look at Israeli military action in Syria, particularly the bombing of the research site, and say, is this a forerunner to some type of Israeli unilateral action this summer? Is this administration firmly behind Israel regardless of what it does? I mean, will we stand behind them even if they escalate attacks, for example, in Syria? I, oh, I think in terms of Syria, we're very much on the same page with the Israelis in terms of not wanting chemical weapons to fall into the hands of groups like Hezbollah. Where I think we could see some divergence is clearly on the issue of Iran. And the red lines just don't match up at this point. Netanyahu keeps saying no breakout. The American government keeps saying no weapons. And so I think this is where there's potential for a mismatch in terms of aspirations and aims.